One. It's that time of year again to bring together the people that you love and bask in the warmth of a television. And to, whilst it can be a little bit tricky this time of year, we thought we'd pull together our favourite games of the year to help you survive the festive period with your sanity moderately intact. The first obstacle for many this Christmas is actually getting home. Traffic, trains, there's always a hundred different things between you and that big family get-together. Once upon a time, this would have been slow torture, but luckily now we've got the Switch. And if I was to recommend one game for you to play on that journey home, it would be the wonderful Hollow Knight. This lovely indie action and adventure game has been the obsession of many since its release on the Switch. It combines platforming and clever boss fights and is all wrapped up in a charming world inhabited by cute bugs. It's not for the faint of heart though, Hollow Knight is as tough as they come, but with the extra challenge comes so much more reward. Once it gets its hooks into you, you'll have dozens and dozens of underground adventures to enjoy. Not that bothered about going home now, to be honest with you. My favourite game that I like to play on the go is Octopath Traveller on the Nintendo Switch. Like, usually when I play my RPGs, I like to play them properly, you know what I mean? Like, sit down in front of the TV, dedicate some real time to it, but Octopath Traveller seems to be designed in such a way that it encourages you to play it in short bursts. So I think Mario Tennis Aces is my favourite Nintendo Switch game this year, despite, I think, actively hating pretty much every single little character in it. Mario Tennis is a game that is frustrating and fascinating in equal measure. It is capable of some of the most dramatic, inconceivable sporting moments you'll have in computer game history. The game is pretty easy to start off with, and then the difficulty level just ramps up something chronic. For me, the best on the go game for the Switch is Stardew Valley. It's a farming sim game where you build up your farm from scratch and you get married and make friends and, and do things like that. And it's strangely, strangely addictive, very addictive and soothing and calm. So the best games I played on the Switch were actually old games, games that were released on the Wii U, but no one had a Wii U. So Nintendo did something clever in taking them to the Switch, like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Both have bite-sized levels, which really work on the Nintendo Switch. Final Fantasy 15 <laughs> Pocket Edition HD. Did it even come out this year? Less than 20 quid and you get to experience the story, one of my mm -hmm. favourite storylines, mm -hmm. of Final Fantasy 15, but like in chibi cute form, it's great. Yeah. Uh, you've played it? <laughs> I've played, no, I have played it, I'm just, I'm just it's good. shocked to hear that opinion. Yeah. Being a gamer at Christmas doesn't mean you have to lock yourself away in your room and have no human contact at all. Get your squad, get your family and play a little bit of Divinity Original Sin 2. This massive RPG stands out from the crowd with both a stellar co-op mode and a fantastic sandbox world where you have complete freedom to mess around with all of the colourful characters, break all the quests and just generally try whatever mad scheme comes to mind. You can also date a skeleton. How often do you get that opportunity? Not enough, in my opinion. I think a game that I'd like to play with an elderly relatives over the Christmas period yeah. probably Tyco No Tatagen. Probably for the Switch because the motion controls in it are actually really good. I think the reactions are really up to snuff though to play. Well, I mean, play in easy mode. Are you also not scared that like, the contact they would make could shatter their brittle bones? <laughs> <laughs> but there's no contact, that's the thing. It's, it's motion control. Oh, right. oh, you're not talking about playing with the actual drum. I mean, if, you have, if I had a drum, but I mean, who's yeah. got that kind of money? <laughs> the best game I played with friends this year was A Way Out. And whilst it's probably a 6 out of 10, it really does something quite different in allowing you and a friend to experience a story-driven game at the same time. The game I've had most fun playing with mates is probably Star Trek VR. It's an amazing experience because you're in charge of a little job on the Enterprise and you've got a captain who shouts orders at you and you've got to work together as a team. And it starts off all nice and friendly, you're doing your little jobs, going about your business, and it just descends into utter chaos. I enjoy I enjoyed playing the racing game Forza Horizon 4 uh, with friends this year. You can always see other people's drivers, so you're always trying to beat their score and do better than them. Uh, so even when they're not online with you, there's still an element of competition. Overcooked 2 is a phenomenal game. Best played in full player mode with your friends. You will be shouting and screaming, telling people to wash plates. Because essentially, right, you play chefs up to four of you in a restaurant and you're tasked with fulfilling orders that appear at the top of your screen, right? Sounds easy enough. 
and it is at the start, you start thinking you and your team are nice and efficient, you know? You start feeling like you're a well-oiled machine. You shout out an order, the order comes straight back. You're like, hey, my man, chop me an onion. Nice. And you're thinking, yeah, we're doing this. Then you get to the later levels. Start shouting at your loved ones. Start cussing them out because they didn't do the washing up. My man over there just set fire to the kitchen and he, he just chucked all the food out the window when he spent two minutes just preparing it. I just like to play any game with my nana, but she's been gone for so long now. <laughs> Goodwill is eroding. Your young cousins are being really annoying and your auntie's banging on about Brexit again. So it's time to escape to the bedroom. But what happens if you've only got your phone for company? Well, lucky for you, Monster Hunter Stories is plenty to keep you going. This is the mobile counterpart to the year's big release, Monster Hunter World. But it comes with just as much content and unlike the main instalment, a chance to actually tame the beasties instead of just killing them all. There's upgrades and exploring to do, plus adorable cats to assist you in your hunting. The mobile game that I spent the most time playing is Florence, which is weird because it takes about 35 minutes to complete. Um, and it's just this really lovely little story adventure. So it's a game about a woman in her mid-twenties and her life effectively, her relationship with her mother, her dead-end job, how she meets a guy and falls in love and so on and so forth. I played it on a plane. Um, finished it, instantly played it again, um, got my girlfriend to play it, got literally every single person that I could like, find to play it because not enough people, I think, were finding it. And it's just a lovely little, compact little thing. It's a beautiful story that really utilises the platform it's on. Inevitably, everyone has one too many sherries or about 12 too many biscuits and goes upstairs to bed and finally you're left alone with the TV for the first time all day. So what are you going to play then? Well, you know what? For me, it can only be a little bit of Spider-Man. Nothing has been quite the crowd pleaser like Spider-Man. Its stunning graphics and massive open world New York City would be a marvel all on their own. But the truly special ingredient is Spider-Man himself and that incredible web slinging. The game wastes no time letting you swing your way through the streets of New York and it's exhilarating in the way only big AAA titles can be. It's not all spectacle. There's a surprisingly human story for Peter Parker at the centre of it that gives the game a real beating heart. The perfect hero to rescue you from the humdrum of Christmas. 2018 has been a fantastic year for computer games. We have seen some phenomenal exclusives to the PlayStation 4. Spider-Man turned many of us into completionists, trying to get 100% in what is one of the best Peter Parker stories ever told across all mediums. God of War made us all think hard about our relationship with our dads and our sons. Right, when it comes to game of the year, obviously you've got your Red Deads, you've got your God of Wars, they're lovely. But one of the best experiences I think I've had is probably Astro Bot Rescue Mission on the PlayStation VR. A lot of VR stuff usually feels like quite gimmicky and more of like an experience than an actual game. This is a full on like proper Super Mario Galaxy style game, which puts you all the way across the galaxy doing these little missions to try and rescue these really, really cute little bots. As a platformer, it is just bonkers good. But as a VR thing as well, the way that it uses VR is so clever that I can't even work it out sometimes. Honestly, like I know it's really hard because not everyone's got a VR thing, but if I had to recommend someone to get a VR just to get this, I absolutely would. My favorite game of the year is Celeste. So you play as this girl who is battling depression and her depression actually manifests itself as the main villain in the game. Your depression is prodding at you, claiming that you can't overcome your big challenge, which in this case is climbing this massive mountain it's a challenging game, but not too challenging that you're throwing your controller off the wall. Two Point Hospital. Uh, it's, a, it's a game on the PC and it's essentially Theme Hospital. And I used to love Theme Hospital when I was a kid. So playing it again in 2018, it looks incredible. I spent so many hours playing that game this year. It is truly addictive gameplay. I love it. Well, that's Christmas sorted. But why don't we cast our eye to the future of next year? I don't know what this does. If you're sick of Christmas cringe by January, right out the gate, Capcom's remake of Resident Evil 2 will be able to wash off the sticky tape and tinsel with some lovely, lovely zombie guts. Looking forward to 2019, we've got The Last of Us 2, Far Cry New Dawn, and also, hopefully, Death Stranding. A game that not many people might be aware of is After Party. It's a game from Night School, the developers of Oxenfree, but the aim of the game is to outdrink Satan. And that's brilliant. 
As for next year, I'm very excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. It's been such a long way. I played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 when I was a kid. It's been that long. Uh, and now 3 is finally coming out. The game I'm anticipating the most in 2019 is Cyberpunk 2077. Hopefully it comes out in 2019. Probably Judge Eyes. It's the new game from the guys that made Yakuza. Yakuza. Yeah, yeah, Judge Eyes looks good. They're making a kind of investigative game. Investigative adventure in the Yakuza series. Yeah, it's a bit like a yeah. kind of Ace Attorney game yeah. set in... Real Life Tokyo. Tokyo yeah. with uh, lots of violent fighting. Which yeah, so it's yeah. fine. The game I'm looking forward to to most is Doom Eternal. Doom, bigger, better, stronger, more hellish. Someone told me that Doom isn't a shooting game, it's a rhythm game, and it completely changed the way I play. Get some rhythm, get Doom Eternal when it comes out. The game I'm most excited about in 2019, two words, Ape Out. I played a little bit of this back in August, and it is brilliant. I think I've thought about it every single day since. Basically, you're a gorilla, and you've got to escape different places, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the whole thing is set to different drum beats and like different drum tracks, and the one that I played was all set to like really awesome jazz music. It's hilarious, and genuinely, I think it's going to be a big one. So now you're all tooled up to get through the festive period. We'll be back next year with more from The Gaming Show, but have yourself a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. What gift did I get? No, I don't want any games. I've got them all.